We are recording. Welcome, everyone, to our class on Sefer Gayon. As usual, we start with a little bit of a summarization, and we have uh, the book laid out in a chart form, which makes it much easier to follow. And this time, we added to the chart. Uh, since we have the ability to use the computer now, we can add uh, color to the chart and also make the charts a little larger. Sefer Higayon is, is divided into three parts. Here I made uh, an indication of those three parts. Okay, You, you have what's called his uh, discussion of musagin, of concepts, which we'll be finishing with Zip Hashem today. He tells us the source of concepts and the various types of them. Then in the middle section, he's going to tell us about the Chelke um, uh, Higayon, what the parts of Higayon are. And here I'll just give you a, a, sneak, a sneak preview of that here. Okay. Let me just, there we go. The, the second part is what he calls Chelke, uh, Chelke Higayon, the, the parts of Higayon, and those of you that were with us uh, for Derek Tfunos will recognize some of those basic parts. But he, in Tfunos, where he started with statements is the basic foundation, because we're, we're trying to understand what people already have conceived in a full statement, which is the subject and the predicate. Here he starts with what he calls shemot, which are the 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 names of terms. So you you have in the Chelke Higayon you have Bir Hashemos, that's the first part here. Then you have the Bir uh, the explanation of statements, which is the second part here. And then finally, as he did in in Derek Tfunos, he gives us. Uh, uh, the seder, uh, the occasion. Hek so what he added here was the terms. Basically, we have terms, statements, and syllogisms, and that's the second part of the sefer, which he calls chalkeigayon. The last part, as he did in Derek Tefunos, is he takes his system, and then he applies it and shows you how to actually use it, and um, adds many important things to what we learned already in Derek Tfunos. So this, this book will, will basically has, has two additions uh, to our knowledge that, that he adds from uh, Tfunos, and that's a very deep explanation of all the terms uh, uh, which he spoke about, the Bechinot in, 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 uh, in uh, Derek Tfunos, and also he elaborates on how to use the terms. And when we were doing our research, we went to the National Library and we discovered that he had a actual, he himself, the Ramchal, wrote an application and it was never printed. Uh, so we printed it for the first time. Um, so Baruch Hashem, we have a, a very, we'll have a very uh, sh strong uh, understanding of uh, the Ramchal system and in in logic in general, as Ram Paul sees it. Okay, let's go to uh, our original chart. There we go. As we said, the first thing that Ram Paul does is discuss the concepts themselves. Before you can make a statement, you have to know what uh, the, the qualities of a term are. So he explains to us that terms, uh, whether they're subject terms or the predicate terms, come from a, um, a source in reality, and then, uh, which is usually the senses, and then we go to higher levels of abstraction. We take color out of an object, and we, we create the idea of, uh, of green or blue, which doesn't exist in and of itself, and then we go to higher concepts like uh, we take the the the, the line we see and we create uh, animal out of it, and then we can also do the 
the Badu, which we said is a little bit of a machlokas between people who are studying the book, whether it means real fantasy, like there's a line in the road, an imagination, or does it mean a higher level of concept. But whatever it is, what we do with the mind, the mind is, is, is organizing its reality. It starts looking at reality from its base perception, the, the senses, and then it starts building. Remember also in, in, in uh, Trunos, the Ramchal told us that the source, the sense perception is one source of our um, understanding of reality. The, the other source was uh, before some ideas which are commonly held by people. Uh, and the third source was uh, revealed source Kabbalah that people have from generations, whether it be history or in our case it's, a, it's, it's the Torah itself was handed down to us uh, from generation to generation from our Sinai. So we'll be using both these books to understand more completely the, the, the concept of, uh, of logical analysis. Very good. Today we're going to discuss the, in depth what he labeled as Mikrim. Mikrim are uh, the various uh, the technical words accident, uh, how the, I think you said the word, uh, variable, uh, a variable attribute, that's what, uh, what you called it last week, is very nice. But basically you have a zah or an object, whether it be a physical object or a, a, um, t uh, a, a musag, a higher level uh, concept, and we want to say things about it. We're going to talk about this object, and it's those are going to be the mikra. We're going to talk about its weight, its its uh, qualities, uh, what action it's doing, what reaction it's happening, what relationship it has to other things, like how much uh, it's worth when it was when it was created, and and so forth. Those are called mikra. I like that word, the variables, uh, the variable attributes that we are going to use to describe <coughs> the etzim, the, the thing that we're uh, talking about. So uh, not to get us lost, this can get a little bit um, complicated in re reading it in a, in a safe or one after another. So we have the Baruch Hashem, the charts we did in the original safer. And I try to redo them with a little color here also so that we can understand the safe a little better. Uh, we're going to be talking about, in, in, this, in this week's class, the Yetzim and Mikra, but in the Mikra we're going to be talking about it in depth. We're going to be talking about the, the here, let me mark it for you. This, this wrote quantity, quality, action, affection, relation, time, place, and what we call uh, Kenyan or acquisition. Those are going to be the subject of today's class. Now he's going to spend a lot of time in this uh, second category called called Echut, but here he's going to spend a lot of time talking about the qualities that man possesses. Whereas in Funos, we'll see he basically uh, gave a general definition that the Echus is the, the quality that uh, any object or human being can have. Here, he's going to go into depth about uh, qualities that human beings have, their abilities, their natural, disp uh, their natural disp disposition, whether they're strong body or healthy, etc. And then he's also going to talk about here the temperament of objects, whether they're hot, cold, wet, dry, soft, or hard. And finally, he'll talk about the form of objects, all objects, and whether that's a physical form or a man-made form. So that's going to be an in-depth in study here, which he didn't do in Tfunos. And we'll be referring back and forth and using Tfunos to help us understand, uh, in his own examples, um, what these qualities represent. So let's get to the safer itself. Before you leave the chart, just for, just for one moment, just to review. So this section yes, that we're dealing with, which is, he calls it, Inyane Ha Saga, 
on Machel Gesera. Could you move, um, slide it over so we can see what's on the right? I'm going to, yeah, what I want to do is give you a width view of it, and maybe I'll just give it to you a little better than that. Let's see if I can do that. If that's a little, is that a little clearer? Yeah, so um, it's a little large on the screen. But right. So we had so this so this section that we're going to deal with, with, with uh, is mikra is a subset of of kol hamusag, but kol hamusag is really including the kol hamatzias that we spoke about before. Right. Kol hamatzias was just dividing up into the into the muchash or musag, which is the senses or the the muscle, which is intangible, but kol but Kolmusag includes that also, right? That's correct. We're dealing with musagim here. The first one was really the level of musag, or maybe even the source, you could say. Are you getting it from your senses, or is it totally something that your mind is uh, creating? That's really the, let's say, the level of the musag. Uh, it, its original source, the senses perceive, and then you start building uh, an intellectual picture of it. Okay, that was the first thing. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about is the musag itself. Once, it doesn't really, if the musag, it doesn't matter if the musag is physical like the lion, or uh, a mufrad like color, or, or uh, a musag like, uh, like, uh, um, like a uh, balchai, like animal. It doesn't matter what level of musag it is. Whichever level it is, it either is going to be the substance itself, the etzim, the zach itself, that we're going to be labeling, or we're going to say something about something we already labeled. So if I say the lion is yellow, so my the etzim is the lion. Now I talk about the mufrad aspect of the lion. I tell you, you know something, it has a quality here that's called yellow. If I say that the lion um, uh, uh, damaged someone, for instance, so then I'm talking about a pula that he did, okay? So that would be a, the, the action that he did. If I if I said the lion uh, was uh, three years old, so then I'm talking about the relationship that the lion has to to time, okay? Uh, Zman itself, I said the lion uh, is here. Uh, let's say uh, maybe that. Would Actually, Yachas would be better if I talked about the value of the lion. And this man would be where the lion is. In, 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 we'll, we'll be doing an example in Shabbos, for instance. Shabbos, it, it, it talks about the Yitzhiyas of Shabbos. Okay? So now, the Yitzhiyas of Shabbos, we're going to be talking about the, the subject that will be the, the, the Easter of Hodesaw. That will be the subject. So in order to do that, the, the Mishnah talks about two people. So each one we could say is an uh, an etzimdic idea. The etzim is talking about a balabayas, he's one etzim, and it talks about an ani. Now it's going to be talking about actions that the balabayas will be doing. He'll be moving an object from one place to another. And then we'll talk about the time that he does it. When is, we, we could talk about the time that this action is happening, uh, whether it's Erev Shabbos during the week, uh, Benish Mashas. We can talk about the two places, Rishu Sarab and Rishu Sayachet. We could talk about the orientation, whether whether the person is uh, uh, standing or whether he's sitting, okay, or whether he or whether his hand is stretched out or uh, and or not stretched out. He's, he's, uh, whether his hand is uh, in a static position, receiving an object, or his hand is uh, doing the pull of, of uh, giving the object. So we can whatever we we're talking about, we have to define what it is we're talking about. So let's say we're talking about the Bala bias here. We, then we're going to be talking about these various qualities that this Bala bias possesses, all in, uh, all in order to understand the together of what is called an Easter of Shams. So really we have the Zach, and this Zach, we're going to talk about it in, in, in various ways. Uh, it doesn't matter what the Zach is, from the lion to the Bala bias to to uh, Kedushin, you could say uh, Kedushin also has a time and a place and an action that has to be done. And you know, the Gemara talks about um, what happens if the woman does the action of giving the ring, or what happens if uh, 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 the ring is is not worth a certain amount of money. That's its yachas, its relationship to value, right? A shavaputa or or a dina, a machlokas. Okay, when is this man of Kedushin? When do we do? What has to be there? So. 
these, in the end, what we're doing is we're talking about some sort of object and we're talking about the pertinent variables in that object. And, and uh, that's really what we're doing when we're thinking. Once we understand what the variables are that's significant, then we'll create a statement about it and we'll say that the uh, we'll say there's Abavas Nazikin, and we'll start making statements. But what we really are doing is we're talking about a zach, some concept, and we're going to tell you something about it. And these things are uh, listed here as its amount, its qualities, its actions, its effect, its relationship, its the time, its place, its position, and various acquisitions like it's the clothes that it has on or the, the, the uh, things that are attached to it on top of Kenyana. Okay, so this I hope is, is clear. It's a little, again, everything that Ron Call does is uh, new when you first hear it. Um, but uh, he's trying to mechadish a system in order to be clear in your analysis of the subject. If you know what type of things you should be looking for in the thing that you're investigating, so you may not know the answer, but you'll know, hey, wait a minute, what action or reaction or yachas is necessary in any din that uh, will, will, you know, will, uh, will be discussing. Now, again, I stress we're not learning uh, this subject to learn logic per se. We're learning it really to apply to our learning. Of course, there's a common quality between uh, logic in the world and logic that we use in learning, and there's an overlap. We just have other forms of logic that uh, are peculiar to Torah, like the, 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 the uh, the Tzadah Shava, for instance. Okay, so what the Ramchal says in his introduction is we have to understand the basic framework of thinking, and then, of course, the Torah will have uh, its own uh, additions for us to to add, which which uh, are part of the essence of how to how to learn the Torah itself. As I said, like the Tzadah Shava, which are not necessarily logical, and that's why they're limited in, in scope, the halach motion we see nice. But we have to be aware of these things in order to handle concepts clearly. So I, that was, a, I hope, uh, a clarification. Basically, we, what we spoke about up to this point was just the general source of uh, concepts, where they came from, what level of concept are we talking about. Now we're going to talk about the concepts themselves and what changes they go through, called the Mikrim. What, what this Zach, or this, you could say a noun if you want to say so, the shame, the, the thing itself, what type of, as you said, I like that word, variable attributes, how did, what can happen to this object. Now, not everything that happens to an object may be significant. So, in the realm of halakha, we want to know which one of these things are important. We, sometimes quantity is important, as we said. Sometimes the action is important. Sometimes the effect is important, whether it's in nezik or not. Some, you know, so, sometimes the time is important. Maybe all of these things are important. But here we have a checklist to ask ourselves questions to say, really, have we looked at this item, this etzem, in all its aspects? And some of the things even on this chart we'll, we'll have to uh, update because it was written 250 years ago and the topics uh, <clears throat> that we speak about now, uh, for instance, in the physical world, he, he defines classically the four types of, uh, of uh, elements that were considered the basic, basics of, uh, of the physical world. Uh, you know, the fire, the boy, he calls it hot cold and wet and dry, which is the fire and the air, and the, the, the earth and the water. Now we have loads of other elements that we've discovered. So we can just add to the chart. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. This is not, this is not halakha motion in Sinai. This is his understanding of how the mind works. So if there's new things that come around, it's, it's no real thing, no big thing. But it gives us a basic framework uh, to use in our analysis. So instead of uh, floating, flumping around, and, and grabbing at straws, we have a clear uh, system in order to uh, 
talk to each other in order to handle the weighty concepts that we uh, deal with every day. Okay, I hope that was clear. It does require talking because these the, we don't think about these things. We don't usually look at our thinking, and that's what he's doing. He's trying to look at the thinking and categorize the process for us. Right, that was a good introduction. It's a new okay. concept, so it, you know it, until it settles in, it takes time. Right, 100%. This is a new way of looking at things. It's and we do it all the time, but we do it subconsciously. We, we do it on, but not subconsciously, unconsciously. We do what we call natural. Uh, many times I, uh, I say, you know, we we speak a language and we're not aware of its grammar. Being aware of the grammar is a meta view, an outside view of the system that we use when we're talking, you know, talking about verbs and nouns and gerunds and all these wonderful things that we learned in, in the dictum class, what we didn't learn. But the same thing in thinking. We think all the time naturally, but since we don't have clear tools to define what we're doing, so then it, it becomes a, a fuzzy type logic. So he's trying to hone the tools so that we'll know we'll be on the same page when we're talking about a, uh, the concepts that we're studying. Okay. The first thing that we remember, he, he's going to break things up into etzim ideas and uh, mikra ideas. And now he's going to say that if we look at what happens to a subject, we can talk about it in these ways. Kamos, Echus, Pula, Hefel, Yachas, Man, Matzav, Kenyan, and Alma. And as he does, he always gives us the, the uh, categories, and then he goes in to explain it. So the first one was Kamos, and we said that there's continuous and discrete. We can talk, there's two types of measurements, uh, measurements which are uh, unit measurements like 10 eggs, and that's called the front, and there's dovic measurements like uh, 10 miles or 10 kilometers, whatever it is. Um, so when we talk about objects, we just have to be clear about which ones, and the examples that he gave, and Kalayan uh, actually gave two different types. Sometimes when area measurement is important, sometimes when unit management measurement is important. Now, of course, when you talk about measurement, then we have a whole discussion of the different types of measurement, surface and uh, you know area measurement and linear measurement and measurement in, in, uh, um, of uh, volume and nefach uh, and uh, as well as a, it's a big area. So he only gave us the Russia program that means the head categories of what we're talking about. But uh, basically, we can talk about the amounts of things: uh, three x, ten x, five x. Or we're talking about some sort of unit measure, pounds, miles, etc. Okay. This category is the category of Eichels, the second category that, that we describe uh, concepts. Let's look at his brief introduction uh, to this in, in the end of Derek Tafunas, as you remember, he went through 24 different concepts, which is uh, going to be which was just a general introduction to these nine Mikrim and the Etz and, and, the, and the other uh, logical terms. It was only general. So here, when he described Eichus, he said, Eichus, who is Tafunas Hanose Umezago, it's the quality of the subject and its, uh, its uh, atmosphere, Mezu, its uh, property of uh, it's um, as it means it's mixture. Let's see. For instance, imhu karv imhu cham imhu alach v'yovesh hamara shabo chesko achalsho. That's how we defined it, and this is only going to be part of his uh, of the chart when he he talks about it in Sefer Basically, he says in Eichus we're looking at the item. We're saying is it. Is it cold? Is it hot? Is it wet or dry? And I said that's key words for the four elements. Uh, how does it look? Its color. What's the strength of the argument? Is it healthy or not healthy? Ukiyot sebo. Derek Mashal, he said the heat zone was agam. We're talking about the vesh. The inside was red, and uh, excuse me, the outside is red. The inside is white. Uh, or when it came to the Tzamas he said that the 
the Tom Zeginima Hard and the uh, excuse me, the Eshune have a Tzomas Hagidim, that's, that's right, the hard parts, and the Rechiche Lo have a Tzomas Hagidim. Whenever that part of the, the Tzomas Hagidim there becomes soft, so that already is not called Tzomas Hagidim. So that's a quality of soft and hard in the object. Okay, so that's his discussion in in uh, Der Trunos. The discussion that's here in this chart, if you notice, he's going to discuss this echus right here, and he's going to break it down into these categories. Two of them are going to be talking about man, the abilities that the human being has, and also here the, the natural um, uh, qualities that he has strength of memory, etc. And then he's going to talk about physical objects too and their form which exists to both. So he's going to give us a much deeper uh, look at Eichos here. He's going to concentrate on uh, the qualities that man possesses, his ability to do th understand things intellectually, to do things uh, practically, to do physical acts, and etc. And we'll be going through that. So that's going to be a, a, a large topic, and uh, I hope we'll be able to do that today. I'll, I'll keep referring back to this chart to keep us uh, in, tra in track. Okay, let's see how he does it now. He says like this, Echos mikra boya omer al daba ma the eich. Echos is the variable that you say about an object what or how. The Yishalek La'ar Beminim, and it's divided into four parts. Kenyan qualities that the object possesses, and he'll def define that the way he wants to define that, uh, certain uh, abilities that the human being has. Hachonativis, their natural uh, qualities, like sharpness of mind. Tehuna, uh, physical qualities, uh, wet, dry, hard, uh, soft, etc. And the tzura, the physical shape that, uh, that uh, uh, an object may have. So let's talk about Kenyan as the first one. Kenyan hu eichus echad ba'adam. Here he just looks at the human being and he says, Kenyan is a quality of man. She'av yado hu roi la'eza pulot. When a man possesses this quality, he can do a certain action. The Yishalek Lashloshimimi, and it's divided into three parts. Iyuni, Maasi, Umalachti. So there's three kinyanam that a person has that allows him to do certain actions. We'll see. There's intellectual Iyuni, there's Maasi, and Malachti, uh, crafts, etc. Let him define himself. Iyuni. What's Iyuni? Hu ma she'inyano yediya v'hasaga u'menei shloshu. Iyuni is an intellectual understanding that man has that allows him to conceive of certain uh, items in the world. It allows him to picture things in the world. What is that? What does he picture? What does he look at? What does he investigate? Even from the word even. What does a man investigate? Right? Well, he divides into three parts. There's Teva, phys the physical world. You have all of science and medicine. Everyone looking at exactly in technology. Everyone's looking at the physical reality and trying to understand it. The second thing that they do is look at Achar Teva. Achar Teva means the things which are beyond the physical world. We look and that's out our field, when we look at the, uh, halacha, for instance, some, some halacha is sikhlias, but most halacha, like Shabbos or Tefillin or uh, even the fine points that we have of Nazikan, go beyond what the Teva demands and goes into the world of Achar Teva, Kabbalah that we have in Kodesh Baruch and Tehunot. Okay. Let's see how he defines each one. Tevel. Who ye deas of the volume ha tivi'im, the bachinas tivi'im, um musag me ha hushim. 
So the knowledge of the physical world he defines as yidias tadaborim tivim, knowing physical things, bebechinat tivim in their nature, u musab mehahushim. It's the things that we sense. This is all modern science is trying to look at the physical world and investigate it and to understand it. Masha Acher Teva. What's the study of things which are Acher Teva, above or beyond Teva? Yediyas Tavorim Shabamala Mikol HaChushim Velo Musagim Mehem. There's a level where we uh, look at things which are above the physical world and we don't uh, get our knowledge about them from the physical world. So uh, the biggest example of is Olam Abba. You cannot see Olam Abba. Uh, uh, Gan Eden, you, you cannot see it. Those are concepts that are given us which are Lamalam in a Teva, which cannot be seen. Uh, Malachim cannot be seen, except in a few cases. Avram Levine, they, they, they appeared to him as a human being. But Malachim, are, as the Rambam defines, uh, they do Pulot. They have tzur, but they don't have any homer, so they, they can't be seen. So those are things called Acher Teva, the world of uh, the spiritual. What's the Chunot? Niklalin behem chachmos hagalgalim, hamispar, handasa, hamabat, hanigun, kiyotzi beze. The Chunot is the, the sciences of uh, the uh, astronomy, okay? Uh, mathematics, the whole field of mathematics, uh, 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 geometry, he puts in optics, the various ways that the, the light refracts, uh, music, very interesting, and Kiyotsebo. Okay, so those things are, uh, those things are a higher level of uh, investigation, like mathematics. It doesn't really, as we say, reflect the world. We could say two or three things, but, but the abstraction of two and four and three times five and, and, and uh, uh, calculus and all these higher level forms of, of math um, exist in and of themselves, separate from reality. We apply them to reality. Sometimes it's some pure mathematics may have very little relationship to reality, but they're, they're, they're not uh, labeling the reality. They're not trying to understand the physical world they're, or the, the spiritual world. They're, they're another level of abstraction uh, that the human being uses in order to understand his reality, but it's not coming from the physical world and it's not machadesh really from the from the world of terror. It's another box called Tchumot. Okay, those are his three um, uh, subcategories of terror, uh, of the uni, I'm sorry, of, of intellectual knowledge, either Teva, Acha Teva, or Tchumot. Okay, so back to our chart again. There, there's our first box of man called Kenyon. He said that there's three categories theoretical, uni, masi, and, uh, no, I'm sorry, it's, uh, yeah, that's right, and malachti, uh, we used to the eon one. The eon one is made up of physics, the physical world, and then there's the spiritual world, Achateva, and then there's the abstract world like mathematics. Okay, and he gave us these examples, astronomy, arithmetic, geology, sector. Okay, so that's called eoni the first part of so even though, ability to acquire knowledge. Okay, yes, please. So even though um, this is under the category of Kol Musag, and Mikra is the, the um, one, one Vari variable of, of Kol Musag, but when he gets down to the detail, he decided that he's going to take one, one echos and talk about things that are specific to human beings. That's right. I don't know specifically why. Uh, I can't ask you specifically why, except that it happens to be maybe a very important part of reality. Uh, 
we're going to get down to our study in one in a little bit also. So maybe you also wanted to put that into context. But whatever it is, when he talks about Kinyonim, he spends a lot of time here in talking about the Kinyonim of Rotham. Okay. So he breaks it down into theoretical knowledge. We said that it was knowledge of the physical world, all science, medicine, technology, that's Teva. And there's a knowledge of the world beyond the physical, etc. And then there's this uh, symbolic world called mathematics and geometry and, uh, and uh, music, which exists in another realm. It doesn't come from the Teva. It has a separate box in his analysis. Okay? Isn't Handasa engineering? Uh, it, nowadays, Handasa is engineering. Oh, it's a modern term. It's a classic, yeah, it's a modern term. But classically, it meant geometry. And I think that engineering came from geometry, which moved on to you know calculus and all sorts of sophistic, sophisticated ways of measuring. Okay, so it's a base term. Uh, we can add to it all the modern uh, developments in mathematics, the modern developments in, in, in construction, and so on as we get into it. But he's just trying to box it and says, okay, the, the, these are theoretical sciences that people acquire. That's why they're called kinyanim. If you don't go and learn them in school, you don't have them. You have to go out and you have to acquire them. You have to, you have to study Torah to understand what's Achar Teva. If you don't study Torah, you, you can't understand these concepts. The things you have to learn, that's why they're called Iuni. Okay? That's what he means in the first box. The second box he's going to talk is what we call Masi practical. He's going to break it up into the lear learning of Musa, of politics, and Panasa, things that help you do actions in the real world. Okay, let's look at that. Okay, here's the Maasi, the second, the second box. Maasi hu yidiyas tikun maase. In 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 was just to understand conceptually our reality, but Maasi, you want to know how to do an act. How to how to do an act. Uh, uh, properly. Tikkun Maase. Um Mishalek Lishlosha Minim, he divides it into three parts. We have Musar, Medinuyut, Vapanasa. What is Musar? You want to look at your personality and you want to develop yourself in reality. You don't want to just know that there's such a thing as Chesed and Rachamin uh, and Din, and, uh, <laughs> but you actually want to take your own Midos and develop them. So that's called Musa, the practical fixing of your own midos. Medinayut also is, is, is politics, is where you take concepts and you put them into the reality of the system of government and how the, 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 the practical day-to-day uh, -day things on the ground happen, how the streets are cleaned and how the, the, the money is apportioned to various uh, projects, etc. And Parnassah's uh, economics, Kalkala. Okay, which is again how to how how not to as politics more they they define it as the distribution of advantages of disadvantages. That's what I went to school one day. But anyway, but now economics. How do you handle money? How do you uh, make sure that your investments are proper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, but that's masi. That's an, that's an activity. That's not an intellectual study. That's uh, per se, but it's a study. It is an intellectual study, but it's a study in order for you to to metak on something in the world, whether it be yourself or whether it be the the country you're in, or whether it be the economic status. The third one he calls is malachti, which he describes as yedias malacha echas. To understand the craft, we would call this crafts. Umachadek l'shnayim. There's malachas chovshiot. And the Shani is called Halachas Lo Chavshil. He breaks it into two boxes. That means crafts which free people do and people and crafts that non-free people. What does it mean? We don't mean slaves. We mean there's certain crafts that a person who has the uh, freedom to study can do. And there's certain crafts that a person who doesn't have the freedom to study can't do. For instance, Chavshi Ham Harauyas Lasarim Venich This is the for universal education, and the free crafts, they're only proper for people who have the free time to do it, the ministers and other uh, 
distinguished people. Lehem, Shlosha, Diktok, Higoyon, Lahalatsa. Learning grammar, learning logic, and learning rhetoric. These things were before the times of universal education. The only people that could learn this were uh, uh, people who were very well off. The common man, he had to learn uh, practical crafts. The halokhoshi, the hen, built They're not fitting for people of uh, higher uh, wealth or status. Kagon, tfira, binyan, bariga. For instance, sewing, construction work, and weaving. Kukiyotsibo. So there's two types of uh, malachas. There's again the more intellectual type of malacha, which is to learn how language works physically with dikto, to learn how thinking works. It's very interesting. He, heard, he, told, he says that's just a malacha. Uh, that's not a, a uni. I would have thought it's a uni. He says, no, that's a practical malacha to how to think properly. And halatsa is how to speak uh, in a way that will motivate. So it goes for the people who are blessed with uh, the ability higher the free time as we call Hoshi, they can learn those higher levels of those higher arts uh, or crafts and uh, the other people have to uh, concentrate on the lower level practical crafts of you know, the physical things like sewing and vineyard and Eureka. Okay, that's how he divides his world. So we said here that here uh, he divides them the world of malachti crafts that people have into the Khovshi group and the low Khovshi. The Khovshi group, they're going to learn uh, crafts like how to speak properly through Dikduk and how to think properly through Higayon and uh, how to motivate through rhetoric. And the uh, people who don't have the free time that have to work all the time going to learn the practical crafts of sewing and construction and, and weaving. And of course, these are all examples of uh, higher and lower uh, crafts. And as I said, now that we had uh, we have uh, the, the Hiddish of universal education, which basically brought the higher uh, uh, studies, the higher crafts to the world, uh, to the common to the common world, who people normally wouldn't be able to do it. So maybe we'd give these uh, little different names. The word liberal arts is interesting that Rose Sackton used. Liberal comes from the word from freedom. That's why they called liberal arts, the word freedom. So it's free. although now we don't even think of the root of the word, but that's actually what it means. Beseda. And as we said, we can now go through the whole university curriculum and and uh, add loads and loads of things to these uh, to these mechanical arts. Okay. Fine. Let's go to the next category. Next category, which is uh, a main category, is Hachanat this, and that's the nature, the natural nature of uh, the person. And he says, but before, before we go on to the next one, so Eich, yeah, so Eichus is only since it's only applicable to people, but does that mean that it's the way people view all concepts? So, if, like we were talking about a concept of uh, animal. So animal, not every not every Muslim has to have all of these qualities. Is that correct? Yes, hundred percent. Not so, not. There's a difference between looking at the achus of an animal and looking at the achus of a human being. The achus of an animal, we might say he's he's uh, what do we say? Uh, he's kal kanesha. He's he's light as an eagle. He's uh, ratzka tzvi has the ability to to run. Uh, a tzvi has the ability to run, right? Much faster than a human being can run, right? Uh, uh, as Kanama, he has the quality of, of Azus. Okay, so we can when we look at uh, animals, we we look at uh, uh, a different aspect that they have. We look more at their hachanatibis, their natural abilities. Man has intellectual abilities, which is basically his kinyanim. I mean, he's he's able to to uh, acquire knowledge of the world around him. And he wants to divide the knowledge that man acquires into these three subcategories. 
okay. it's theoretical, practical, and mechanical knowledge. I hope that's clear. So th this particular Kenyon, and a Kenyan only, the only one that can do a Kenyan, the only one that can really uh, gain knowledge is the human being. An animal is born with the knowledge that he has, and he just continues doing it. I don't think he learns very much. And maybe he learns, uh, maybe nowadays they study, uh, and you can teach animals certain tricks and things like that. We went to the zoo and did an article where the animal was, you know, listened to certain commands and he bowed down and he lifted up his trunk, you know, it was an elephant and stuff like that. But it's very minimal what an animal, the kinyana would be of an animal. So the human being, this is how the Ramchal describes the human's the human being's ability to uh, gain wisdom from the world, and he breaks it into these three parts, which they have their subcategories. Okay, the next one is really well, the 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 tehuna tibis and the tehuna and the form that is not going to be localized to man. As he said, when he when he when he opened up his line in in Kenyan, he said this, this describes man himself. It's a peculiar quality when we talk about man. We say which qualities has, has this man acquired? Uh, okay. Yep. Let's say that. Let's go back. Okay. Now, what's the second quality? Now, this is not peculiar to man, but uh, it it can relate. Hachanativis is hanimsa benose mitzad tivo. It's any quality that that exists in uh, in etzim naturally. Kugon, chidu hasechel v'zikaron. But when it comes to man, his ability to think how sharp he is in thinking, or how good his memory is, or physically, the the chosek haguf uriaso, the 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 uh, health of his body. It, and it's the power that he has, to, powers and physical powers he has to lift things, whatever, see things clearly. Uh, Kalasatnua is his ability to act, um, to move. So Chanitiv is here. He does not say as he did. If you look, and he's very careful with his language. When it came to Kenyan, he said he said it's an echas echad ba'odam. He specifically said it refers to Adam because only man really can do kinyana at this level. But when it comes to hachanatibis, man has a physical nature, but so do animals, you see. Uh, as I said, you know, kalkanesha or gibokari, those are natural qualities that an animal possesses also. So there, both the human being and the animal world have these uh, natural qualities. Now he talks about tehuna. Tehuna. Who Masha Betochan Hadaba Umizugo? It's the Tochan Hadaba Umizugo. What is a Tochan Hadaba Umizugo? Let him describe the, it's the internal quality of an object. It's, it's Mizu. What does that mean? This is, we'll say, Kaechad. Rishoni, Svashemi, He says there's two levels of this Tochunot. What's the Rishonot? Smechalek la Arba. The first thing we talk about the physical qualities of an item, the primary qualities of an item, he talks about its chemistry, whether it's hot, cold, whether it's wet, whether it's dry. Okay? Now the classic form of that is the is is a remise to the four elements. I said now we have many more elements. Uh, so again, this is a, a, a basic way of looking at the physical elements in the world. We'll have more ways of looking at it. Uh, in Tfunos, you remember, he spoke about very practically, sometimes if something is wet, then it'll makabal tuma. So we have to know if the item is wet or or whether it's hot, you want to have to know. If it's yad lettuce bow, it could be an easer of cooking or an easer of Shabbos, or whether it's cool or whatever. So these are physical, whenever we talk about the physical qualities of an action, of an object, and these are the four basic ones that we talk about. It's heat or it's lack of heat, it's it's whether it's soft, or whether, whether it's wet or whether it's dry. Okay. The second level he talks about is whether it's hard or soft, light or heavy. 
if it's if it's hakoshi uh, v'haroch, hakalut v'hakubed. Okay, so we talk about things being light and uh, hard, soft, and the examples he brought in 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 tfunos, uh, that some say gidim, and what's not considered some you know, the hard part and the soft part. So this is another general quality that we use when we try to discuss the physical attributes. Tapuna is the physical attributes or the chemistry of an item. And as we said halakhically, these, these things come into play depending upon which halakha you're talking about. If it's tuma, then you better be talking about wet and dry. If you're talking about Shabbos or cooking uh, or Shabbos or, or, or milk and meat and uh, cooking milk and meat, you better be talking about temperature. And again, these are Roshe Prakim, a checklist, a, a, a general checklist, so that you'll be able to um, systematically look at an object and check out which one of the qualities are important. And even if, and if things are not mentioned, you'll ask, well, why is this quality not there? Is it Peshit and it didn't have to be mentioned, or is it not Shaykh to this particular Din? Okay, that's called Tehuna, the physical qualities of an object. The yeah, last I don't, part, I don't yes, see the please. I'm trying to see the relationship in the two subcategories. We have um, and why he broke it down to Chaim and Kar, Lachash and, and Yavish. Is there a relationship between Chaim and Kar, Lachash and Yavish? And there is a separate relationship between Kaisha and Reich and Kalas and Kaivit? I don't really see the. Uh, okay, it's a very good question why he broke it down uh, in, into those those qualities. You call them primary and secondary. And the truth is, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I I know what he's saying, uh, but I don't I don't particularly know why he calls those primary and secondary. Um, I guess I could guess at it. I mean, when you talk about the chemistry of an item, that's more primary than talking about whether it's soft or hard. But uh, I'll leave it up to you. We have to think about it. Okay. okay? That's what he did. Okay. The last thing he talks about is sura, the form of an item. It's the physical form that the object has. And here he's going to divide it into two parts. There's two types of physical form he wants to divide the world into. The natural form, for instance, how a man looks with his head, his shoulders, chest, and his feet or the Tzuras Asus, how the horse looks different, even though he has those items, how his head is shaped different, and his body is shaped different, his feet are shaped different. That's the, the, the physical form. Uh, and all other things. Uh, everything has its peculiar form. Then he wants to say there's another type of form, which is called Mabachtit, which is Tzuras Anase Biedei Adam. For instance, uh, 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 a uh, computer, all these things that man work on. So there's certain, he divides the world into natural form, what things look naturally, and then when man creates his forms, everything from to the Brooklyn Bridge to to a, a, a soda pop bottle, whatever, okay? And again, as we said, these are general categories for us to m have a framework for our thinking, but all the details will be quite large. Okay, so that's his discussion of kinyan. Now, why is it called a kinyan? Because these are the things that, uh, excuse me, not kinyan. These are called echos, qualities that an object has. So we said, just as a review, there's four types. There's kinyan, which are the peculiar qualities that man can acquire, his intellectual uh, abilities or his abilities to, to learn how to do things the chonativis are when we talk about the qualities of an item, its chemistry, its temperature, yeah, whether it's soft or whether it's hard, whether it's uh, uh, absorptive or non-absorptive. Nowadays, for instance, we have what's called osmosis. I don't think they, they may not have understood osmosis in the time when he wrote the Sefer. But in Israel, they have, uh, uh, they're producing um, fresh water from the ocean. 
So this process, the cold process of osmosis, they figured out how scientifically you can pass just the water through a, a filter and not uh, and not salt. So that's things that we've developed here. Okay, but that's all talking about the 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 physical nature. Excuse me. Um, what did I say? No. The natural distribution is whether things are uh, in man. Excuse me. I, I skipped. That's really. That's what we call the chuna, I believe, that I just explained. Described. The the hachana tivis is the the, the 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 nature of man. The, the naturally what what God has given him is physical traits of mind, or of body. Uh, or of uh, alacrity, how we can that that body can move, and we said it's not necessarily man, but it's it's qualities, uh, Kodesh Baruch Hu, physical qualities, the Kodesh Baruch Hu has given the uh, man and animal oh, in this thing, in this thing. I would say Tehuna is more the physical qualities. Man can also be hot; he can have temperature or not. These things overlap, but. Uh, the chun is more of the physical qualities, whether something is hot or cold, soft or dry, or uh, wet or dry, or soft or hard. And then finally, everything has a form. It's either the form that's given to it by nature, or the form that man works. So that's how he divides the categories of echus, the quality of man and other objects in the world. Okay. Let's stop here. That was a very big unit. The other units are going to be much uh, briefer, as you can see on the chart. And as we get into it, we'll see the, the whole picture. And the important thing here, I think, is our application. When we're studying, as I said, you're studying Shabbos, you want to know what is important in the Easter of Shabbos, which one of these variables will make a person uh, um, break Shabbos. For instance, the Ani, uh, what does he have to do as far as his movement? Uh, what are the Rishuyot? What's the place? Okay. Uh, does he have to do, what quality does he have, does he have to do an act of Kavana or is it just to hone a tip letters and does load Kavana? So these are the type of things that we're interested in in the Easter. Okay. Um, and that's where I'd like to focus the safer. The safer can be looked at as a book on general thinking, which it is, but also in our case, of, I, I like to find practical applications to our learning, which is really what we want to use this for. And as we're going to see, the, as I showed you in Tunis, the little guy himself uh, uh, talks about uh, these classical boxes. Okay, so let's uh, end our class here. I wish everyone. Uh, Good luck, and for those that can join us, we'll start in a few minutes the session of the Plaque of the Talmud. I hold it's one of the biggest secrets in life. It's obvious, uh, but it's something that's missed by many, many people. So whatever's being said is Hiddish. You have to say what you would have thought, and since you would have thought differently, you have to say what is the Hechlach of the Talmud to say what he said. Okay, that's the basic rule. Next week we'll go over his specific example, um, and uh, we'll understand this basic uh, sound very, very clearly. Okay. Very good. Okay, Avi. I, like I said, this this book is is.